Hey, what is it guys? Today we are back with a 2D platformer. In this one, we're actually going to start concluding stuff a little bit. So we're going to try and close that project so we can move on to more complicated stuff a little bit later on. But to do that, we need to finish this game. So to finish this game, first thing we need to do is when we do die for real, um, so say so when the hit point hits zero, we actually need to do something about it. So, so here it says failure down there. We are going to double click on that. And the reason we can double click on that is because we did a debug.log. So this is where we want something to happen. By the way, if you double click on your line, it's going to highlight it. So um, really good practice to have when you, you haven't coded something yet. You can just put a debug.log and when it pops, it's going to remind you that you pretty much need to do something. <laughs> okay, so when hit points hits zero, when we're below zero, we're simply going to call application dot load level and then we're gonna call our menu if you remember our menu is over here just make sure that if it is the same exact string as the name of the scene in this case menu takes a capital letter so you gotta make sure that it's in there as well so application load level menu semicolon and then we should be good to go for this very def function okay so we hit play we're also going to need to move our spawn position. Oh, not our spawn position, but the position of our player when we start. So when we die, it goes back to the tit title and pretty much means that we fail. Now we can also win in this game and we also have a score to keep track of. So whenever we do win, what I'd like to do is save our score and maybe, maybe the time as well, but save our score and then move to the um, move to the menu scene again. So here it says victory when we hit the victory box. Let's double click on that. And we have our win function that we made a little bit earlier. Now we're gonna do the same exact thing. So we're gonna send the player back to the menu, but we're also going to keep track of other stuff such as the score. Now, um, there is many way to keep track of a, any kind of value uh, in Unity. We could take a text file, write to it, and keep it somewhere uh, somewhere in a folder of our game. We could also write it inside of the registry, or we could write it inside of a server, any kind of, any kind of places that you can store data at. In our case, we're going to be using the registry because it's hidden and nobody can really modify that unless they know exactly what they're doing. And uh, Unity gives us a nice function that makes it really, really easy to do so. And I will show you what exactly you have to do. It's super simple. We have the public void win over here. In there, we're going to say player prefs. So this is the, uh, well, it's a summary. Store and access player preference between game session. We can also use this as some kind of save game. So we're going to say player pref, save int, I believe. Where is it at? Oh, set int. We're going to use set int. And then it takes a key value and also an int value. The key value is a string. We're going to say um, player score. Uh, just remember your key because that's what you're going to be using to load the value as well. So we're going to say player pref dot set int and we're going to set the score value that we keep track of inside of that very object. So up here, this is a score. So whenever we die, uh, whenever we win, we're going to save the score back into the, uh, the registry. So we'll, something else that would be really nice to have is on, in the menu manager, because now we have saved the value, but we're, not, we're never actually displaying it. So right here in the menu manager, I'd like to actually add another function. So um, let's go here in menu manager, make sure you open it in model develop. I would also like to add a private void start that is pretty much going to load our value. So um, this is the start. Make sure you write it properly. So capital S. And then we're gonna do player pref dot load. No, I mean get, get int. And then we have to give it a key. Now remember the key is the exact same thing we wrote here in the set int. So get int player score. Now this returns us a int. Um, that we're gonna store maybe in like private and score. Let's just put it in there. 
we're gonna say score is equal to this okay so now this should be the value of our score when we win the game if it's not set I'm not sure what happens actually if it's not set let's go ahead and try this it might give us an error okay so if it's not set then it's not going to return any kind of error. Now let's try to use that inside of a text field. So here we have our working title. Let's change this for something more, uh, I don't know, jump, jump game, whatever. And uh, let's also add another text field. So I'm going to right click on panel, UI, text. And this is going to be, say, the high score. And I'll Put it, I'll anchor it top left, put it 0, 0 up here, and make it maybe a width of 300 and a height of 50. And up there, I'd like to give it a, uh, a, a small margin, so maybe 10 by 10. Oh, minus 10 actually. Then we're gonna write high score two dots and this is going to be where I display my high score okay now we're gonna do the same exact thing we did with the with the text uh, when the game is playing so the text that display the score and the hit point we are going to go back inside of level manager declare ourselves a text object so in order to do that we need to make sure that we're using system dot actually not system but we were using unity engine dot UI and then in our initializer up here we're gonna say public text score text all right let's go back in game really quickly our menu manager should now hold a field called score text make sure you drag and drop our score this one inside the field just like this now we have a reference to that very component here and we can use the high score um, text back in our script where it says start we get the score and then I would like to display it so we're gonna say score text score text dot text because we're getting the text value here this is a text component and this is the text value is equal to then we're gonna say open the quotes high score two dots in outer space plus score to string just like so now let's go ahead and press start on this see if we have any errors it says zero and it is because we never actually uh, put anything inside of that of that field over here so let's go ahead and play our game let's make sure that we have a score of at least one and then a win so I have a score of one right now Whoop. okay I'm gonna I'm going to cheat a little bit so where's my player at here it is I'll move it up there I'll... okay I'll move it at the very end of my level so here and then we are going to enter collision with our win box. It goes back to our menu scene. And as you can see up here, high score is now equal to one. Once more, let's try it just once more to make sure with a high score of two. So here's my first coin. Here's my second coin. Oh. And can I make it? Okay, so we have a score of 2 right now. Let's enter collision with our win box. And up here you can see that my score is now 2. Let's actually close the game and start it again. My high score is still 2, which is exactly what we wanted. So I'm going to show you exactly where you can find these value on your computer. If you're using a Windows operating system, you are going to click on Start. And then inside the Start here, you're going to see Red edit just like this now open it up this is going to open up your registry for your computer and you're going to find your values inside of hkey current user and there you're going to go in software 
and inside of software you're gonna find the name of your company that you registered with uh, Unity. You might not have a company, that's that's alright, I'm gonna show you how to change that very field in a moment. But under software, find the name of your company and then you're gonna find your game, so in my case 2D platformer and my score should be written in here. So you can see that this is my player score and also had a random string next to it. Uh, it might not be random, but I don't know. Um, and then the data, as you can see, it is set on two right now. You can also double click it and change a value for say uh, 5578, something of the sort. And then if you go back in your game, press play. Um, it's actually, I written it in the wrong format, but as you can see, we modified the high score and yep. So this is where it is stored. Now, one more thing we need to fix before we end this episode is, say I actually end the game right now with a score of two, or maybe three if I'm lucky, nope, never mind. Say I end the game right now, what happened is my score is going to get overridden. And the reason is, as you can see, high score two, the reason is, is because we just, we no matter what happens, we set our score to that very value. However, since we want to keep track of a high score, then we need to check beforehand. We need to check if this score is higher than the last one. So in our win condition, we're going to say if, let's copy this, if player pref dot get int, and then we're getting the player um, player score, just like this. If this is higher or bigger than score, then we go ahead and do what we said we did. And if it's not bigger, then we simply don't do it because we're not replacing the high score. Okay, so a small error here, we have to inverse these. So if the score is higher than uh, the value that is inside of our registry, so if score is higher than that, then we replace it. Um, I had it the other way around because I just, I messed up. Okay, so now everything should work fine. Let's just again to make sure that's tested once more. So current score is now equal to zero. And if we go ahead and try to win this as fast as possible. And wow, okay, I just failed. Um, again, let's cheat a little bit. Score is now equal to one. Now my score is equal to zero. And if I end the game right now, so score is equal to zero, high score is one, high score is still one. Okay, so that pretty much concludes it guys, that pretty much concludes it for um, this tutorial. In the next one, I'd like to just add some art around, just mess up with the asset store, give it some kind of good looking um, background, assets, all that kind of good stuff, and then I can finally call it a day and we can move on to bigger and nicer project. Now remember that when we start creating this very 2D game, um, we we pretty much put everything in the same script. As you can see, the player is pretty much a jam-packed mess right now. But uh, the more you iterate through that, and the more you just add little function one by one, you're gonna start realizing that this might not be the best model uh, to to control your your player around. So this is why we iterate a lot when we code. We make we remake the same stuff over and over again every time adding a little new feature or adding a little new way to implement our function that is going to make it so it's more easily manageable now this code over here is is, is fine for what we're doing right now but say we had um, we had different camera state and we had different player state and so the player could do a backflip while he's moving and maybe stuff that he could not do before then it would get really messy in here and it might not be the best model to have. So this is why we pretty much iterate a lot. Now this was a really simple example of a 2D platformer. We tried to do it as beginner friendly as possible but if you feel like you're ready you can move on to maybe the, um, the tower defense playlist in which we create a more advanced way to manage your input and manage your movement. You only have to watch, I think, like the, the three first episodes and you're going to have a really nice setup for a controller that is really um, expandable and you can create stuff on top of that. So guys, next episode we're going to make it pretty and we are going to call it a day so we can start other projects and yep, 
So thanks again for watching and I will be seeing you in the next one.